I was always brought up, you know, farming the land and growing crops and I find that all very interesting. Sowing a seed and to a crop that's coming in through the door and the, the smell of the fresh produce coming through the pack house and the washing of that product and all, like, you know, it gives you great satisfaction that you're actually, you know, you're growing stuff, you're delivering stuff to the customers. Hi, I'm William Gilpin, third generation of our family business, Gil Fresh Produce. Uh, we're growers, packers of fresh vegetables, supplying supermarkets, retailers, food processors, shops across Northern Ireland and Ireland. I'm Thomas Gilpin, I'm the owner of Gil Fresh Produce in County Armagh. I'm not really the man to make it all happen now, William and the team and all, they make it happen. I just uh, work behind the scenes and uh, looking about land and like I tell them, you don't get land at the end of an email. It, uh, you get to talk to people over the country. I suppose it started 57 years ago uh, at my parents' place down in Port of Down. Uh, was simple then, we were growing scallions and different wheat crops in a four acre field. It was really all hand work on it. They had the old hoe for hoeing for weeds and stuff. And, Way, way back, a long time before that, my father and his brothers grew vegetables uh, for different things then, simpler. I suppose a certain amount of uh, industry must have been in your blood a bit, and that's why you, you elected. When I left school, a lot of stuff was finished in the fields. Cabbage was cut in bags, turnips was trimmed and snedded in the field, and carrots were um, just early stages been dug by harvester at that stage, but before that, they were all pulled by hand and basically supplying a lot of the, the shops across and wholesalers across Northern Ireland. And then and at that stage in 2000, the supermarkets come into Northern Ireland where you have the likes of all the multinational supermarkets in the UK. So started to um, build a pack house here and wash and pack and uh, pre-pack all our vegetables and just learnt every aspects of the business growing up from the farming right through to managing staff and building a team. And now I have a 130 strong workforce here. The team now that William has got around him, I started the team, but he has really developed the, the team that they're an excellent bunch of people. Don't think there's anybody that I know has any better team to be working for the business. We have the growing side of the business, which we always had, which concentrates on the growing of the vegetables. But in Gilfresh, in the packing side of the business, it was pretty much all about core vegetables, your whole carrots, your whole cabbages. But over the last, 10 years we've evolved quite a bit into prepared produce, looking at how we add value by battening the carrots, slicing your, up your cabbages, dicing your turnips. Um, so all that sort of thing has grown quite a bit and more recently even into our new kits like um, slicing peppers and importing some product as well to add to our current range of products that we grow ourselves. It's developed quite a bit and uh, it's exciting going forward. I suppose uh, a lot of the highlights has come to head this last 15 or 20 years uh, with all the crops were growing everywhere uh, and nearly all year round production. If it's not here, it's in some other place, uh, Spain or Scotland or also the construction of the aerobic digester uh, several years ago to get the, your own electricity, uh, using our own crops, even waste vegetables is going into it. It's very much a family business now and I'm involved in the business. My father and my uncle are still involved in the business, but my two cousins are in the business, in the business as well. And they're, they're being a great help as well because they're looking after the farming side of things. You, you'll meet Richard later today as well and growing the product. And then also now recently, I've got a, a young son, George is only two years of age now. So he's mad keen about tractors and farming and all too. So it's trying to keep the whole thing going for future generations as well. So I'm Richard Gilpin and I look after the growing side of our business. So we have Gil Fresh Produce is the packing side and then we have Gilpin Farms which grow the vegetables. So today we're out in a scallion field just outside Porta Down in a place called Ahori. Uh, this here is a 15 acre batch of scallions we've, we've grown here. So we've been here for probably over a month now and we're just uh, coming into the last section of the field. Uh, the scallion season for us, harvesting stretches from about May 
through to the middle of October. So we grow two different types. We have summer scallions and winter scallions. So our winter scallions, we have sown our first batch there two weeks ago, and they will be harvested come next May. And then we also our summer scallions next year, whenever the land starts to come dry enough for us to travel. And then hopefully that will follow right through the season. So the scallions are grew in what we call beds. So we come into the field, we ply the field, we prepare a fine seed bed and it's a 1.8 meter wide bed and we have three rows of three up the bed. So this is a couple of reasons. Growing them in three rows of three, they're grew closer together. So that helps to manage the size of the crop. So if we, we go to a part of the field where maybe we had bad germination with the seed, you'll see there'll be bigger scallions which are out of spec for us, so we can't sell them. And also growing them three rows together helps the team whenever they're in harvesting. The three rows, they can easily bunch them because all our scallions are manually harvested. So the team that come in, they pull the scallions, they clean, clean around the roots, they put elastic bands around them, and pack them into boxes with 84 bunches in them and then they get sent back to the pack house where they're washed, labelled and sent out to the supermarket. This is a Yonut, he's the supervisor in our sky in field. So he's looking after the whole team here. So as you can see, he's pulling the sky in, he's cleaning in towards the roots, making sure that they're presented well before they go back to the factory. Then he's leveling them up and he puts two bands on them and puts the bunch behind. So then he'll keep doing that, they'll lay the bunches out and then they'll fill the trays. So each tray has 84 bunches in them. So if we take a look at a bunch of scallions, this is how we're sending them back to the pack house ready. So we have cleaned along the tops of where the roots are and along the, the shaft. We try to remove any so there's like wee bits of yellow tips will come into the scallions. So we'll just pull that off. But up here, we don't have to worry about that the field because your scallion bunch that goes to the shop will actually only be about this length. The rest of this is removed. Uh, scallions is probably one of your more sustainably packed products because this is essentially how it's sold in the store, just with two elastic bands, whereas all our products will be wrapped in plastic or put in bags. A bunch of scallions is sold as a bunch of scallions. That probably makes it more sustainable as an option to buy. We don't actually process any scallions. We don't slice scallions or anything. All are sold as bunches. I suppose they're part of the onion family. so. In the field, you can actually smell the onions around the field, so you can substitute an onion for a scallion. A very versatile crop. So we've just come a few miles around the road from the scallion field to an area that we have a lot of brassica crops in. So on the farm this year, we're growing two different types of cabbage. So. We're growing a sweetheart cabbage and we're also growing a savoy cabbage. I suppose a lot of our market is still selling the whole head, but our own prepared ranges with Gelfresh, we use a lot of cabbage. So the two different types of cabbage helps to give us a different blend of colours within the pack, which helps to make it more appealing. So like scallions, harvesting's all manual. So again, we have teams in the field here manually harvesting each piece of the crop. Cabbage, unlike the scallions, are planted. So where our scallions are sown by seeds, we plant modules. So the cabbage plants, the seed is sown in the glass house and grew for about four weeks in the glass house before it comes to us. And then whenever it comes to us, we have already prepared the seed bed. So we have ploughed it and made a nice fine seed bed. In this field, we have, we have savoy cabbage, we have sweetheart cabbage. We have broccoli just over beside here, and then we have kale on over at the other side of the field. So they're all part of the brassica family. Because they're part of the same family, a lot of the same feeding programs and pest control programs are used. So it means that we can grow them together.
So the harvesting process involves the different team members. They're taking a row, or they're taking three rows of cabbage each, and then they're going through, cutting with a knife, and then as they cut them, they're making sure they're not bringing too much extra leaf, because the outside leaf isn't sold, so it remains in the field. We chop it up, plow it in, it helps to add organic matter back into the soil for the next year's crop. They put them on the carousel, the carousel then brings it round to where there's another two members in the, the trailer. So one of them is unloading into trays, and then the other member is uh, lifting the full trays and then stacking them onto the pallets, so that whenever we go back to the factory, it's just a matter of lifting them off with a forklift and straight onto the line. So just before we head back to the packing facility, we've just called in at our celery crop. So we've harvested some crop already from this field and we are planning to be in here again tomorrow. So celery is an allergen. In order to help stop cross-contamination of harvesting, we do that on a separate day. We use separate equipment and the team will only be in the celery field that day or they'll come to the last thing just so that they're not in an allergen crop and then move them back into a non-allergen crop. Like the scallions, the ground's prepared, it's formed into a bed, and then the celery's planted about four row up the field. The spacing helps to maintain the right size of crop. So a lot of our customers are looking for about a 400 gram stock. So we have worked out the spacing we need to get that uh, size of product. We have some over here that's been harvested, so every week we're planting a batch to allow us to continue supply throughout the year. So if we want to harvest every week, we have to plant every week. So from April on, we're planting our celery to try and maintain supply right through to October, November time. You can't smell it, but we in the field can smell the very strong smell of celery just as you see the leaves along the ground that'll be cut off from the last harvest. And again, we'll just go over here and we'll actually cut a stalk and just show you what is actually left behind. Celery is actually in the same family as your carrots, your parsnips, and your parsley. So it's another factor we have to consider whenever we're planning where to plant the celery. We have to make sure it's not falling the car crop just in case there's any carryover of diseases. Again, celery is another one of our crops that can be yet straight from the field. It's as fresh as you can get it coming straight from the field. Hello there, I'm William Gindi, the general manager at Gilfresh Produce. Uh, here behind me, uh, this is our pack house number two facility, where we process all of our brassicas, our cabbages, our salads. So here behind me, for example, you can see our packaging line, where we, uh, we take care, look after the cabbages as they come from the field, grade them according to the customer's specifications, label them and ensure that the quality is up to the standard that our customers are looking for. So as we come here to the finished product in the packing line, as the raw material comes in in those crates, it's graded, uh, all the waste leaf is taken off, uh, the, the, the weights are all checked to make sure that they comply with all the relevant technical standards. Uh, as you can see with me as well, as the line moves, there is a waste box there where all the waste leaf goes and all of our waste here, food waste, goes into our anaerobic digester that's there to produce biomethane and in turn it produces electricity. So we want to work with harmony with nature, we want to produce our own energy from all of our waste, so it's a great sustainable business. Uh, and as you can see here, this is the finished product, it goes on the customer shelf, it's compliant to the standards, it's fresh, it's locally grown, it's a great product and we're really proud to be here. 
Hi guys, this is Mario Abu Samra and I'm head of operation produce here in Gifresh. So today you have seen in the field how we plant and how we harvest the scallions and here we're going to see together the washing, cutting and preparation of all the scallions to deliver our product to the customer within the same day or the next day on the shelves to keep the freshness for the customers. Here we see the first, this is the same craze that we saw in the farm. So they're coming in these crates, already pre-cut at a specific length. And the start of the line is just with the first wash. So in the first wash, we'll have the people that are just putting it on the first machine where actually it's washed properly all the roots and cut another time with the proper lengths in order to go into proper bunching. So this is our first step here, where all the scallions get cut on a specific length and the roots get cut and go to the other stage. This is not considered as a waste because here sustainability is our first priority. So all this waste is actually collected and goes to our plant where we use it as, as a byproduct to create energy. As a first step here, the roots are removed and the scallions are cut up to lengths and we'll go through the machine while actually is having a further washing to make sure to clean all the scallions and make it ready ready for the customers. After all the washing, we'll go for additional check up here. So additional quality checking on the line to see if everything is okay. So if there's any defects, anything else that need to be removed, any leaves need to be removed, it goes straight to the line and continues straight to the packing table where we pack in each plastic crate according to the customer requirements. So after it goes for the trimming and the quality check, as we discussed earlier here, the further line will continue straight to the end of the line where you have a further check. The people are checking the quality and pack inside plastic crates. Here furthermore, the product are checked and seen and put elastic on it and it goes inside the plastic crates that is ready for delivery. So this is our last step here where the product being loaded on the truck. This is the same product that has been harvested today, packed today, and will be loaded today to be delivered tomorrow for all the retailers. So that was a short insight in what we do here at Gilfresh in packing our fresh quality vegetables all the way from our field into the pack house and on to the customer. And now I'm gonna pass you over to my colleague, Caroline, who's gonna be using some of our ready uh, vegetable kits uh, to cook some uh, very delicious meal for you. Hi everyone, my name's Caroline and I'm from Get Fresh Produce. Alongside our whole head vegetables that we grow um, and pack on site, we have also developed a range of prepared vegetables this year in our own Gilfresh brand, and that's what I would like to talk you through today. This range of vegetables here is our core range of vegetables, and the reason we decided to, um, I suppose, design and develop these products was to try and make everyone's life a little bit easier. Everyone's very busy, and we're all very mindful of trying to get in our five a day. And anything, in my opinion, that helps you to get that one of your five a day is a bonus. So we have developed 14 products in total. They're all very easy to cook. None of them take more than 15, 20 minutes. Some of them would be your traditional prepared vegetables and the newer range would go into a nice tasty vegetable fajita kit or a spice bag kit, which is very popular. Now I'm going to talk to you just about our vegetable fajita kit. This is a perfect, um, quick and easy, tasty meal solution for during the week. Inside it we have our mixed peppers and a red onion, and we also have the fajita seasoning sachet. So everything you need for the protein is in this little pack. So it is, and whilst I've been talking, my colleague Leah has actually been cooking one up for us. So we'll go over now and see how Leah is getting on. So what Leah has done um, is just very easily added a little bit of oil into the frying pan. 
She she's added in some protein, which is the chicken, and just to give it a, a little bit of a bite. And also then just literally put in all of the vegetables. So you can see you have your sliced yellow peppers, sliced red peppers, sliced green peppers, and also the sliced red onion. And then whenever that all softens down a little bit and the chicken is cooked, you add in the fajita seasoning. And it smells delicious and looks delicious. So I think we should call in some work colleagues here and get everybody's opinions.